Let us commence this morning worship service by singing the opening hymn. Let us pray. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moves with us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manful sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor clog them before the face of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His infinite goodness and mercy and although we ought at all times Humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His most holy word, 
and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you as many as are here present to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying with me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from the ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done, and we have done those things which you ought not to have done. And there is no health in us, but thou, Lord, have mercy upon us. Miserable offenders, spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, O Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name amen the almighty god heavenly father who of his great mercy had promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon us pardon and deliver us from all our sins confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us everlasting life through jesus christ our lord amen Let's all together say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> O oh Lord, open thy lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen praise ye the lord the lord's name be praised Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The seas is and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me. Proved me and saw my words. Forty years long was agreed with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost.
Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we'll have the first reading. The first lesson for today's Sunday morning service is taken from Exodus chapter 14 verses 10 to 20. Exodus chapter 14 verses 10 to 20. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians then to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Acknowledge thee to be the Lord, all the earth that worship thee, the Father everlasting. To the all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To the cherubim, seraphim. Continually to cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of, of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee the noble army of martyrs praise thee the holy church throughout all the world 
that acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou the King of glory, O oh, 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 Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When Thou tookest upon Thee to deliver man, Thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou hast opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Proud, safe, O oh Lord. To keep us this day without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O oh Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us. As the trust is in thee. O oh Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Now we shall have the second reading. The second lesson for today is taken from Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, beginning to read from verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Here ends the reading of the Holy Word. Oh, be joyful in the Lord. All ye lands serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be sure that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, 
His mercy is everlasting and His truth endure from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy ghost born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified dead and buried he descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of god the father almighty from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead i believe in the holy ghost the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen the lord be with you and with thy spirit let us pray lord have mercy upon us christ have mercy upon us lord have mercy upon us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen o lord show the mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation O Lord guide our rulers and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee and do the ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful O Lord save thy people and bless thine inheritance give peace in our time O Lord because there is none other that fighteth for us but only the O God O God make clean our hearts within us and take not thy holy spirit from us Amen Let us pray the call it for peace O God who art the author of peace and the lover of concord in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life whose service is perfect freedom defend us the humble servants in all assaults of our enemies that we surely trusting in thy defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord Amen Let us pray the call it for grace O Lord our heavenly Father almighty and everlasting God who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day defend us in the same way with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings may be ordered by the governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight through Jesus Christ 
our Lord. Amen. Now we shall have the second hymn to be sung. Let us pray. Our most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise the Lord for this blessed day. We thank you, Lord, for this holy day that you have given us once again in our lives, that we could come together to worship you, Lord, and to rejoice in you and to receive your word and uh, your spirit in our lives, O oh, Father. Pray for your Holy Spirit to anoint us, empower us, and guide us, O oh, Father even as we wait in your presence, O oh Father. Be with us and enlighten us through your word and through your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I greet you all in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and a warm welcome to you all to this morning worship service. And we praise God for this blessed day that God has given us once again, that we, we are alive and we are praising God and rejoicing in him and uh, uh, in his word and we thank God for this blessed moments that God is giving us in our lives and to our families dear ones uh, this Sunday we have a topic to meditate upon and that is uh, believing in Christ the way believing in Christ the way in a famous uh, novel named Alice in the Wonderland written by the English uh, mathematician called Charles Ludwig uh, Dodson. He tells of a girl named Alice falling through a rabbit hole into a fantasy world populated by a peculiar anthropomorphic uh, creatures. So in this book there is a conversation between uh, Cat and the Alice in chapter 6. Alice asks uh, the cat, saying that, would you tell me please which way I ought to go out from here? The cat replies to Alice and says that depends upon uh, a good deal upon where you want to go. The Alice uh, replies, I don't much care where I go. Then the cat replies, then it doesn't matter whichever way you take. It doesn't matter whichever way you take. 
So that's an appropriate answer for a uh, for a question that uh, this girl has asked. When she herself doesn't know where to go, the reply of cat is this: that it doesn't matter whichever way you take, that doesn't matter. But not so with us in this Christian life. Though in this world we have people of this tendency, where they are living in this world and uh, they are following their own ways and their own uh, you know ideologies and philosophies and their own spirituality in a way. There are several ways in which uh, human uh, being has invented for himself, for his happiness, for his satisfaction, and for his uh, well-being. But not all the ways, according to the Bible, will lead into the eternal life. Not all ways are right. According to the Bible, there is only one way, and that is the way of Jesus. The way that Jesus has shown to us, to the Father, to the Father. Therefore, for a Christian, not any way will do, but the only way that God has set for him will do. So that we be sure of the way that we are walking in, so that we are sure that we will end up in the right destiny called heaven that God has set for us through his Son, Jesus Christ. In the Bible, we see that in the Old Testament, uh, you know, passages, there are several books where God has instructed severely and seriously the people of Israel to walk in the way that he has shown, to walk in his ways, you know. We see that uh, uh, in the Jewish religion also, you know, of course, the Old Testament teaches that man should always uh, walk in the ways of God only. Man should not turn to right or to the left but what, uh, walk according uh, as the Lord has commanded. As the Lord has commanded. We see that in uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5. If you have Bibles, you can open to that. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse uh, uh, 32 and 33. We see that where God is instructing Moses to tell the people that the way that they should be walking in the ways of the Lord. Deuteronomy 5. Verse 32 and 33. Therefore you shall be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. You shall walk in the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you. That you may live and that is that it may be well with you. And that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall prosper. So this is the... In a way, a commandment and also the warning that God has given to the people of Israel. That they should be mindful of their ways. To walk in the ways of the Lord. So that in the land that he gives to them, even when they dwell in that land, it may be well with them. They may live in peace and prosperity. And uh, uh, there be a well-being in their lives. And also we see that Moses has warned the children of Israel in uh, the same book, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 31, chapter 31, uh, you find that. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse, uh, uh, it's 29, where Moses is warning the people of Israel that uh, they should be careful in walking the, in the ways of the Lord. You know, Deuteronomy 31, 29, For I know that after my death you will become utterly corrupt and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger uh, through the works of your hands. So Moses warned the people of Israel that uh, after his death, he showed that these people will definitely get corrupted in their ways and they will provoke the anger of the Lord so that it may not be well with them in their lives and uh, in the land that they live in. And therefore, we see that God always expected his people to walk in the way or his ways that God has you know, revealed through his prophets and uh, through his uh, you know, servants, that, uh, whomsoever that God has chosen uh, in time to time to rule and reign the uh, nation of Israel. We also see that David and the prophets also commanded the same, uh, that the people should walk in the way. Psalm 32 Verse 8, we see that David is praying. Uh, David is saying, I will instruct you and teach you the way that you should go. 
That's what the Lord is saying in this Psalm 32 verse 8. And also in Isaiah 30 verse 21, uh, we see that, you know, God is uh, in a way, a prophet is telling these people that uh, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ear will hear or uh, hear the uh, voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. This is the way, walk ye in it. So God has made every provision for the people of Israel that they walk in his ways. They walk in the way that he has set for them. Even he has provided them, you know, a, 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 a still small voice that will always, you know, uh, be uh, alerting them uh, to walk in the ways of the Lord. That's what we see here. You know, in your ears you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. You know, that is a wonderful provision even God has given to us today through his Holy Spirit and through his word, through his servants, that God is giving us every time, every day, the, his ways or uh, his words where we can walk in and uh, live well with the Lord and in peace with God and with one another. So Isaiah 35 verse 8 we see that a highway shall be there and a road and it shall be called the highway of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be uh, for others whoever walks the road al uh, although a fool shall not go astray. So God has promised here the people of Israel, that there will be a highway in the desert, a highway of holiness, which God has set for his people, that they walk in that way. Even a fool, when he walks in that, will not go astray, will not go astray. So we see that God is very particular that his people should walk in the way, or in the ways that he has commanded to his people through his prophets and uh, through his uh, you know, uh, uh, through, through his, uh, um, you know, priests. Also, we see that in Psalm 86, verse 11, Psalmist is saying, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. So this is the ultimate prayer of King David, saying that I want to be instructed by you. You teach me the truth, so that I may walk, uh, you know, in that truth, in the way of that truth. This is the prayer of the age-old saints even in our land. You know, we, see, we know that there is a, uh, there is a uh, uh, prayer called Asatoma, Sadgamaya, Tamasoma, Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma, Amrutangamaya. You know, so the, the prayer of the age-old saints, Lord, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from death to life, you know. So this is a wonderful prayer that our saints have made in the olden days. And this is a wonderful prayer even David is praying, saying, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. I will walk in your truth. Yes, God himself is the truth, and he wants his people to know that truth and walk in that truth that God has said for his people. You know, we have that uh, in Upanishads, a, a word called, a, a phrase called Bhagat Satyam Jagat Mithya. Bhagat Satyam Jagat Mithya. That means God is truth and uh, the world is illusion. The world is maya or illusion. And also we have in Sanskrit uh, the word uh, the, called Satyam. Satyam, the word Satyam, which has three syllables. Three syllables in that. Satyam. Sa ti yam. Sa means, uh, or sa means uh, immortal, and ti means uh, mortal, and yam means, uh, you know, connected, you know, which joins both, that means uh, which connects both. So, so satyam means, uh, you know, connecting the immortality with mortals. Connecting the immortality with the mortals. That means the immortal God getting connected with. The mortal beings, that means human beings, that is satyam. Satyam means the connection between the mortal and the mortality. And that is uh, the wonderful provision that God has made, even through his son Jesus Christ, the ultimate truth, who came down onto this earth and he himself proclaimed that I am the way, the truth and the life. And nobody else can go to the Father except through me. That is the powerful statement that Christ has made in his word. 
So what we see here is this, dear uh, church, that we are called to understand this truth. That means this Jesus and uh, the way that he has shown us through him so that we may not miss the mark, but we end up in one day in the eternal destiny that God has set for us in this, in this life. And therefore we see here that uh, Christ himself said that when he came into, onto this earth, you know, uh, and in his high priestly prayer in John 17, 17, he said, he, when he, while praying to his disciples, he said, uh, you know, sanctify them in your truth, O Lord, and your word is truth. Sanctify them in your truth, O Lord, and uh, you in your word, uh, in your truth, O Lord, and your word is truth. Your word is truth. And the same thing even Jesus Christ told when he stood before Pilate in um, uh, John 18, 37, we see that when Pilate asked, are you, uh, you know, uh, what is the truth? Then Christ said, uh, you know, I have come to, I was born to this end I was born and for this cause I have come that I bear the witness for the truth. And Pilate asks, what is the truth? You know, that's a foolish question because he is seeing a truth personified standing before him yet asking what is the truth and this is the world today even we are living in when they know that the truth is Christ himself the one who came to reveal the truth through his life and death and resurrection and uh, the one who showed us the way to the truth uh, to the to the father in heaven to that uh, to the wonderful glorious place called heaven but still today, today the world is asking what is the truth they are in search of truth. But whereas Christ himself, you know, revealed that I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the way and uh, the truth in that way is me. And uh, the life in that way is me, through me. And therefore Christ is somebody, you know, whom God has set for us as the way. That we know him, know that the truth and get the life that God has set for us. And today the topic as we see that is this. That Jesus Christ, the way. You know, Jesus, believing in Jesus Christ, the way. So we are called to believe in this way. That God has revealed to us through his son, Jesus Christ. That's what Christ is also saying in John 8, 31 and 32. We see that if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And therefore, dear, uh, dear, dear, dear church, we are called to understand that God has set for us the wonderful, you know, uh, personification of uh, the truth through his son Jesus Christ and showed us the way through him to the life that he wants to give to us through his son Jesus Christ. And that is the eternal life, the salvation, the heaven that God has set for us in his son Jesus Christ. Now when we go, go back to the lessons that were read for us, the first lesson, Exodus chapter 14, verse 10 to 20, we see that, uh, that, that the people of Israel, you know, were, were, were called to believe and stand firm to see the salvation of God. The people of Israel uh, were, were called to believe in the salvation that God is giving, that, giving to them and, and uh, to see the stal salvation of God and stand firm in what they are believing. Uh, Exodus 14, 13 and 14 we see that. So we see, we see here that we see God reveals uh, his name to Moses saying that I am that I am. You know, when he uh, revealed that name to Moses, there is uh, there's only one intention why God has revealed uh, to Moses. It's not that Moses asked, therefore God revealed, you know, God revealed this name to Moses so that the people of Israel may believe in that name and obey in that name. He revealed that name to Moses, saying that, you know, I am that I am has sent you. Tell them that I am that I am has sent you. So, the, 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 the people of Israel are called to believe in that name and obey in that name so that they will have a deliverance a great deliverance that God has set for them. And uh, while after revealing, revealing his name, God has empowered Moses, his servant, to redeem the people of Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. But we see here that, you know, when, Pharaoh, when 
Moses has led these people, the Israelites from their bondage, into the, to, to out, out of the Egypt. And uh, while they are marching, they could see they, they have faced a Red Sea before them. And uh, behind, we see that Pharaoh changed his mind and he is coming after them with his chariots chasing to once again captivate the uh, Israelites. So we see here that that is a time, you know, in spite of witnessing and believing all the miracles that, the, that, that God has performed through his servant Moses before the eyes of the people of Israel and above all before Pharaoh, even in that time, there came a time when the people of Israel were, sh were, in, were stuck in between the Red Sea and the Pharaoh's army and the ultimate test of their faith upon God and his name and his servant is about to be faced by them. And that is the time instead of standing firm in that name, instead of standing firm for that name, the people of Israel, what they did is this. You see that in uh, uh, 11 and 12 verses. You know, they say that, uh, uh, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not that we, uh, we said to you in the Egypt, leave us alone, you know, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. These are the words the people of Israel have spoken, you know, after witnessing the powerful, powerful, you know, works of God through his servant Moses before Pharaoh and his people. Before their own eyes, the people of Israel could witness how the Lord has been delivering them from all these plagues. Yet, there came a time, a test for their faith, a test for their obedience in the name of God, the revealed name of God. These people stood as failure. They said, you know, we would have been, it would have been better for us to stay in Egypt and serve the Egyptians than to come and die in this wilderness. The words of, out of frustration, the words out of fear, the words out of the lack of, uh, you know, faith in God. Even today, as, you, as we face the grave situation that is around us, the virus, the COVID-19 virus is prevalent all around us. The pandemic, the, the great plague that is killing the people around. As people of God, we are called to stand firm in the name of Jesus. With the name of Jesus. To walk in his way and to hold down his name. That will protect us. Nothing else will protect us in this world. Nothing else. All the precautions that we are taking, the masks and the sanitizers and uh, you know, all other things that we are using are of no use. Unless and until we put our real trust in the name of Jesus and walk in the ways of the Lord. That is what is protecting us. That is what is preserving us. So let us be always, uh, you know, thank God for his protection and provisions in these days of, you know, distress and crisis. Not like this, you know, Egyptian people, uh, uh, Israelites uh, who have uh, turned their words in a very fraction of seconds out of frustration. They cried out saying it would have been better for us to stay back in Egypt to, you know, serve the Egyptians rather than to come and uh, die in this desert. God didn't send his people to die in the desert, but to experience the deliverance, to stand firm and see the salvation that God has set for them, you know, into their, in their lives. So when we are stuck in this kind of puzzled dead ends, we are called not to look around, or not to look down, but to look up, but to look up. Because it is up there our God is, and He is the one who provides us. He is the one who protects us. He is the one who redeems us and delivers us from all these uh, uh, situations that we are stuck in. As King David says that, I lift up my eyes unto the hills, from where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of the heavens and the earth. That's what is the faith and the confidence that we should have, like psalmist. You know, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. Yes, the great God. To whom we are called to lift up our eyes, nothing else. Therefore, in verse 13, we see that, you know, Moses is saying, Fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, 
which he will work for you today for the egyptians whom you have seen today you shall never see again the egyptians that you have seen today you shall see them never again so that is the promise that god has god is god has given to the people of israel to stand firm in faith to stand firm in that name and their faith upon that name and uh, and to see the salvation that god has set for them even today the name of jesus is something that god has given to us that we hold on to that name we stand firm in that name and we walk in the ways of the lord so that we are pro- protected and preserved and uh, we will be always you know uh, uh, on the right track of uh, walking and uh, moving in the uh, midst of crisis you know cs lewis one of the greatest christian writers said in this way you never know how much you really believe anything until it uh, its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and death you never know how much you really believe anything until its truth or falsehood becomes a matter of life and or uh, life and death until it comes to us as a matter of life and death the real test of faith is not done even in our lives you know when it comes to that factor of life and death then our true faith will be revealed our true belief upon the lord will be revealed that's what happened to the people of israel the true you know faith has come up not in the faith on the lord almighty but on the egyptians and uh, uh, on the pharaoh so let us not be like that but let us always believe in the lord for the deliverance that he gave to us through his uh, son jesus christ secondly we see that in the second lesson the gospel lesson that was read for us uh, believing in the, uh, in the in the in the in the in the way of god will lead us to the to the heaven or to the eternal uh, destiny that god has set for us believing in jesus will lead us to heaven you know that's what we see in uh, uh, john chapter 14 uh, where christ is uh, promising his disciples in uh, 14 chapter we see that verse uh, one on verse let not your hearts be troubled you believe in god believe also in me and let he says that in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also this is the wonderful promise that christ has given to his people who really believe in his name who really believe in his name so we see that there is a glorious place called heaven that god is preparing for his prepared people a people who are preparing themselves in believing jesus and walking in his ways and accepting him and his salvation in their lives as god is preparing a beautiful place called heaven the heaven is a is is not is is not a, is, is is not something a myth it is a physical place a real physical place it's it's a literally it's a, it's a literal city which has uh, buildings which has roads which has rivers which are gardens citizens and the perfect rule of god is there in heaven and there are countless galaxies and the nebulas uh, in the in the universe in this universe but towards the north side of the of this universe there is a literal city of immeasurable expanse that is the city and that is the heaven that god is in from there god the creator sits on his glorious throne and rules on this vast universe empire so our salvation in a way has begins in the spirit but culminates in the glorification of our physical bodies so our final goal is to live with our glorified bodies in the glorious place called heaven to that place or to such kind of place christ is calling us jesus is saying i am the way to that place where god rules where god has a wonderful provision for you for eternity to live in peace and security and prosperity and jesus says i am the way for that except through me no one can come to the father no one can come to the father why only through him 
Why only through him? Because Hebrews 9, 11 and 12 verses says that, uh, you know, it is Christ who has shed his precious blood, you know, uh, for our sins and redeemed us from the curse of sin and death. Thus laying us a great highway of salvation that we have read in Isaiah 35 verse 8. A great way of highway will be laid in the desert, a way of holiness. And all the people who are, you know, called by the Lord will be, will be, will be walk in that holy way or on, on that highway. Even a fool when he walks on that way will never go astray. So that's what we see here that a, a, and a highway shall be there and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. That is the wonderful way that God has set for us. And that way is here on this earth available to us in Christ Jesus. The ways of the world are corrupt. And they are narrow. And they are broad. And which will lead us into destruction. But the way that God has set for us through his son Jesus Christ is a narrow way. Only few will find it and we are called to be in that. To go and to, you know, uh, enter into that wonderful destiny that God has set for us. Sometimes, you know, we choose our own, you know, ways and miss, uh, miss to get back to that great highway that God has set for us in Christ Jesus. Sometimes while walking in that highway, we just take a byway and we go in our own way. And we miss the mark. And we miss the way. We cannot really... Uh, we struggle to come back to that highway. But remember, when we miss the way, it is Christ who will walk to us to bring us back onto that highway. Just like he did to the disciples of Emmaus. The last week we have meditated upon that. The disciples of Emmaus who are, who are from, uh, walking away from Jerusalem on the road to Emmaus. They, have, they, they are on the highway, but they have taken the byway and they are going away. And that is the time Christ himself drew unto them and, uh, and, 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 and in the, indeed uh, uh, on the road of confusion and on the road of ignorance and enlightened them by expounding the scriptures to them. He met uh, in that way, he has met them and uh, enlightened them so that their confusion is, you know, uh, may, uh, is, is vanished, their ignorance is uh, dispelled and uh, they became the wonderful witnesses of Christ uh, in the time. Also he met Saul on his, on his road to anger, on, uh, on his road of anger and bitterness, you know, and uh, revealed himself to him on that road. Acts 9 chapter, you see that. Thus making him a great messenger of his salvation, uh, of his salvation. As Christ meets his people on his way. On their way, even they take their byways, but God, Christ go to them. To bring them back and to put them on that highway of holiness. Likewise, on whichever road you may be traveling today. Whether on the road of discouragement, on the road of loneliness, on the road of pain or suffering and pride and anger and, and self. Whatever the road that you have taken for yourself. Be assured that Christ is coming to you. To bring you back to the highway of his holiness. You know, where he will be your guide. And you are master. Therefore dear church this morning. Let me encourage you. That God has given us a wonderful provision on this, in this world. Through his son Jesus Christ. So believe in him. Jesus. The way to God. The way to heaven. The way to peace. The way to protection. The way of salvation. As we live on this earth. Because there is through him only. We reach our destination called heaven. That glorious place that God has set for us. Therefore, this morning, let me encourage you that God has given us a wonderful provision through His Son, Jesus Christ. Let us not mumble. Let us not, you know, um, struggle like these people, Israelites, who really wanted to go back. But let us press forward and move ahead in our life because Christ is with us and He is, he is along with us to guide us, to lead us into the wonderful destiny that God has set for us. So believe in him and walk in his ways. May the Lord bless this word to us. Let us pray. Gracious loving Father, we thank you Lord for this blessed day. We thank you Lord for revealing us once again and reminding us that Jesus Christ is the way that you have set for us to live on this earth in safety and in security. 
and also to reach our eternal destiny called heaven. Pray that your Holy Spirit continue to guide us and protect us and use us for your glory even as we bring many souls into this way so that your name is glorified and our lives be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Greet you all in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, once again, uh, warm welcome to you all and God bless you all. I hope and pray that God is uh, protecting you and taking care of you in all walks of your life. And it is our prayer that God continue to protect you and shield you under his wings of grace. And uh, God bless you all. In this time, I would like to make a uh, uh, few announcements. The first thing is this, that we are just a phone call away. Uh, if you, any one of you are in need and uh, uh, need for need our services, kindly let us know that uh, we can come and help you in uh, whatever way that you wanted us. You may call me or the secretary for this kind of help and uh, kindly feel free in this regard. Secondly, uh, many people are uh, asking us about their offerings and uh, tithes that they uh, want to give to the church. Now our uh, suggestion is, or our request is this, that you wait till the uh, normalcy comes back in the church services. That means uh, when we are open again as a church, then you are uh, welcome to come and give your tithes and offerings. Till then, you may put them aside and uh, uh, give it later when things get normal. If you are so eager to give in spite of uh, this lockdown, uh, you are welcome. We have a box out there in the St. Paul's uh, 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 church, the offertory box. So you can drop your offerings out there. If you are giving in check, you can write the check in the name of St. John's Church. St. John's Church. And drop it in the box. Kindly inform us so that uh, me or secretary, so that we, we will be aware of uh, uh, you dropping the che check and uh, it will be uh, presented for the collection. So that is up to you. Uh, it's, it's not uh, uh, that we are saying, but if at all you want to give, this is the provision uh, that is for you. Otherwise, please wait till the things get normal. So thirdly, we have uh, our dear ones who are celebrating their uh, birthdays and wedding hours in the course of this week. And uh, they are as follows. Uh, kindly uh, note, uh, on 10th, we have Mrs. Vandana Abraham celebrating her birthday. Mr. D.R. Bhakti Singh celebrating his birthday. On 12th, we have Master Johan Se Franklin. On 13th, Ms. Dr. G. Shubhakar Garu. On 14th, Ms. Maga Prakash and Mr. R. Edison Daniel. And also on uh, 15th, we have Ms. And Mrs., uh, Mr. P. Krupavaram and Mrs. Archana N. And also on 16th, we have Ms. Shalini Vinolia. 17th, Ms. Jakovin Das Singh. And, uh, and also the wedding anniversaries that we have. Uh, 10th, we have Mr. and Mr. Vijay Raj G, 11th, Commander and Mrs. Uh, Satish Prasad, Mr. and Mr. Mark Robertio, and uh, 12th, uh, Mr. and Mr. Sanjeev Kumar, Mary Po, and Mr. and Mr. R, Raja Govind Rao, and 16th, Mr. and Mr. V, Vijay Kumar, and uh, Mrs. and Reverend John Augustine celebrate their wedding anniversaries. So I request you kindly uphold them in your regular prayers, yeah, especially in this time as they celebrate these happy occasions uh, in their life. And also kindly uphold the sick and senior members of a parish in your regular prayers. Uh, there are as follows, Mrs. Sindra Devdas, Mrs. Dorothy Simon, Mrs. Sundara Shankar, Mrs. Jala Di Agnes, Mrs. Ranjan Gordon, Mrs. Shantikumari Patnaik, uh, Mrs. Nalli Anand, Mrs. Sundara Jwali, Mrs. and Mr. Paul Treasure, and Mrs. Tanushri Ashok. And also uh, uh, kindly uphold Mrs. Sheila Jackson in her prayers as she is recovering from her ankle operation. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Shall we pray? Our most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise the Lord for this blessed day. And especially we pray that you are, Lord, uh, gracious hands be stretched upon these that dear children who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries in the course of this week. Pray for your blessings upon them, O oh Father, 
and uh, bless them with good health and strength and long life and uh, may they celebrate many more happy returns of this day in their lives and uh, uh, they may continue to glorify your holy name and be a blessing to their own families to your church and to the kingdom of father we also pray for all the sick and senior members of our parish pray for your gracious hand to be upon them to bless them touch them and heal them and strengthen them and restore them to normal health of father and we also pray for all the uh, dear, uh, people who are suffering with this uh, uh, corona virus of oh, father pray for your gracious hand to touch them and heal them and uh, relieve them and uh, restore them back to normal health of oh, father we especially pray for the uh, medical personnel and the police and uh, municipal staff and all other people who are directly or indirectly serving these patients of oh, father pray for your gracious hand be upon them to touch them and bless them of oh, father and protect them and shield them under the wings of grace so oh lord we commit ourselves and all our, all the families of our church in your mighty hands for your care and protection of oh, father continue to touch us and uh, heal us and strengthen us and uh, uh, protect us oh, lord under the wings of grace let your precious blood be sprinkled around us and our uh, families and our houses and all that belongs to us let your uh, holy angels be around us and protect us and shield us that no virus may come nigh to us but let your precious blood and let your precious angels always protect your people of father we come in ourselves once again into mighty hands for your blessings and for your guidance and for your protection of father we give you all the glory and honor to holy name in jesus name we pray amen amen let us pray almighty god father of all mercies We thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us the due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfrigidly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise. not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our lord to whom with thee and the holy spirit be all honor and glory world without end amen let us pray almighty and everlasting god who alone worketh great marvels send down upon our bishops ministers and deacons and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace that they may truly please thee pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing grant us o lord for the honor of our advocate and mediator jesus christ amen let us pray Almighty God who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee and has promised that when two or three gather in thy name thou will grant their requests fulfill now o lord the desires and the petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world the knowledge of that truth and in the world to come life everlasting amen Let us receive the benediction the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with all of us both now and forevermore Let's conclude this service by singing the concluding hymn.
the heart of a mother is a deep abyss at the bottom of which you will always find forgiveness mothers are kind and forgiving when you're looking at your mother you're looking at the purest love you will ever know mothers are an epitome of love and happiness a mother is she who can take the place of all others but whose place no one else can take mothers are the god given angels to us they take meticulous care Mother's arms are more comforting than anyone else's. Mothers are so amazing. Mothers don't sleep. They just worry with their eyes closed. Mothers are so caring. A child's first teacher is a mother, and a mother is definitely better than a teacher.